<sighs> so let's talk about all wheel drive Dodge Caliber SRT4. <laughs> As we know, all the SRT4 caliber um, calibers are front wheel drive. Uh, a lot of people have seen the video where uh, my caliber has been converted to all wheel drive, and they want to know parts lists. What does it take? How much? How much is it? Let me try to answer some questions all in one video, so I don't have to keep answering a hundred messages. And maybe we can just compile this information here. Uh, if you decide to do this, you have any more information, feel free to drop it in the comments. Um, and then just let me know what you think. I, I think it's pretty cool. Um, a lot of people say it's not worth it. It's the Dodge Caliber. People build everything, man. There's all-wheel drive turbo minivans out there. I don't care. That's basically what this is. Um, so let's get some notes real quick. There is an all-wheel drive caliber from the factory. I believe it's an RT uh, caliber. It's got a 2.4 motor. Um, it's got weaker internals, but it is all wheel drive. There's a drive train there. Um, I don't think there's a five speed variant. If there is, I still wouldn't trust it. Even if you built it just because the rest of the drive line is so weak. Um, it's got like a, basically a decoupler at the front of the rear diff that decouples the, uh, the drive shaft from it under certain circumstances like traction, speed, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's pretty cool, but I wouldn't trust it with any amount of power. <laughs> Basically, for what I would like to do with it is beat the crap out of it and it never break. Oh, God dang it! I can't do that with that. If you wanted to, you could take a full all-wheel drive drivetrain from a Caliber RT, put it in your car. It would probably bolt right in. Gas tank, rear end, drive shaft, trans, transfer case, all of it. Um, just because it's made for that body. And this engine has the same bolt pattern and all that as the, uh, the 2.4 naturally aspirated in the Caliber. Um, so let's start with the engine. What can what can we do with that? Let's look at this. I've got some notes to read off of, so pardon me if I'm looking down for a couple times. It's a lot of information. So the Caliber SRT4 engine block. This is a 4B12, I think is the code for it. Um, basically, World Gasoline Engines. Uh, it was based on the Global Alliance engine. I want to say it's like GEMA, GEMA, G-E-M-A. It's kind of oddball. Um, basically, it's the same company, corporation, that designed engines for, say, the Evo X, the 4B11. This is a 4B12. Um, you also have naturally aspirated versions of the 4B11 in, like, the base model Lancer. You've got naturally aspirated versions of the 4B12 in the uh, base model Caliber. I think Caliber RT. There's, like, Jeep Compass, uh, Jeep Patriot. There's a Hyundai variant, I think. A bunch of different cars. Made at the same time, same company, same setup, basically. Um, the 4B11 Evo engine, the 4B12 caliber engine have a lot in common. One of the things I was interested in is the bell housing bolt pattern. Okay, so the six-speed uh, transmission that comes with caliber SRT4s. It's the same bolt pattern as the Evo X transmission, right? So basically all these transmissions are interchangeable with a few slight differences. Um... Um, you can take an Evo X GSR or MR, I prefer the GSR 5-speed transmission, and you can mate it right up to this block, no issues, okay? So basically, you can take that transmission, just boop, there, I have an Evo X transmission. There's a little more to it. If you wanted to just get, say, an Evo X engine block, transmission, uh, transfer case, but basically everything off the front of the Evo X and swap in, go for it. The mounting points, uh, the engine mounts are so similar, you could get them in there. You might have to slot some holes uh, as far as the engine mount brackets themselves, but you could just straight up swap all of that in. I'm going to be talking about what I did, which is the Caliber SRT4 engine mounted to the Evo X GSR drivetrain. All right, so let's say you've got your transmission. You've got it bolted to your block. Now, clutch and flywheel has to go in there somewhere. I decided to use the Evo X clutch and flywheel combo. Um, there's a lot more options out there for it. They've been tested a lot more than the Caliber stuff. I have had no issues with my Caliber clutches, but I just wanted to do something different with an Evo transmission using Evo clutch and flywheel. Um, I will say um, the, the crankshaft here, the Evo and the uh, Caliber, 
both bolt up to the crankshaft. The flywheels both bolt up, no, no modification needed. Uh, the Evo X flywheel, slightly larger diameter, which means this is where the caliber starter goes. It will be moving further away from your crankshaft because the flywheel is further away. The teeth are further away. Um, so what I did is Evo uh, flywheel and clutch mounted on here. Easy enough. Then I just basically removed some material, bringing that starter out here. I took small amounts away, kept test fitting for the, uh, the transmission to go on here, and I kept going until I could get my starter to fit and the teeth fully engaged on the flywheel. It's going to be the same thing with the bolt holes, this one and this one. You're going to also need to bring them out slowly as you modify it and basically move this starting point over here, the, the starter point over out this way. Um, it's going to match up with the bell housing of the transmission, which is going to be fine because that's what your bolts screw into. It's going to engage with the teeth. Bam! You have Evo starter, Evo clutch, Evo flywheel, Evo transmission. Um, so that part would be done. Going along with that, the Evo X GSR transmission is a push style clutch, um, whereas the caliber is a pull style clutch. Um, so what I did for that, the um, I think it's called the slave cylinder, master cylinder, whatever it is, I just used all the Evo X stuff. I ran my hydraulic line from my caliber throwout bearing. Um, I ran it to the, the slave cylinder, master cylinder, whatever. I ran it to there, teed it on, no issues at all, works perfectly fine. If you were to use a caliber clutch and flywheel, I'm not exactly sure that how that would work. The starter would have to be modified with the transmission side, um, as well as you would probably have to convert that transmission to a a yeah, pull style clutch, which they have kits that can do that. You can use different clutches, flywheels. I just went with the Evo stuff for simplicity. Next, we're gonna talk about the transfer case. This is where a lot of the, the issues stem from, right? So um, I got an Evo X GSR transfer case. So we know that's gonna go on the transmission, no problem, the GSR transmission. I'm 99% sure the MR transfer case works just the same with the exception of maybe one little seal or gasket or something. The Evo guys would know more about, about that. You maybe get on a forum or, or something and see if the MR versus GSR transfer case would work. But I know I used a GSR transmission and just picked up a GSR transfer case. Um, so when I go to install the transfer case to the, uh, to the transmission, it's gonna hit the back of the block. And when I say the back of the block, I'll show you where I'm talking about. So this is the ladder frame, right? This goes on the bottom of the engine. So this bolts onto the bottom of here. You've got your crankshaft, pistons, rods. This goes on there. Uh, it's your ladder frame. It keeps all the oil from splashing up. Um, and then on, on the bottom of this is your oil pan. On the back side, back here, the transfer case will hit right here. Um, I do believe it cleared the block, no problem. I don't think I had any issues there but it hits here. Um, the Evo has a provision for that. It's got space where it moves it back. Um, that's why I say if you want to get an Evo block, it just drops in, everything fits together. This, you will have to cut this out. You will have to clearance this ladder frame to fit the Evo X transfer case back here. So what I did is I got my grinder, I just started shaving away material until I had enough room to fit the transfer case. From there, I took this piece back off and I started looking at it and I'll try to put some pictures in here so you can kind of follow along. But basically on the bottom of here, I had cut so much material out, these walls were gone. I mean, basically you're taking this wall, you're gonna shave all this away and you're moving that wall back. Two things, you've got oil passages where oil needs to drain back into the pan. Your pan is bolted here, uh, along with your oil pump. So when you move that wall back, you also have to modify the oil pan to fit this ladder frame after you cut that out. I don't have a good way to tell you to do that. Um, there's not really a dead set way to tell you. This is where you drill a hole, this is what you do. This wall has to be moved from here back to somewhere in here, right, to make room. Um, do that however you need to do it. <laughs> um, it's not going to be under a huge amount of pressure, but it will see, you know, engine temperatures above 200 degrees. It's going to see any crankcase pressure that you have. Um, I don't want to tell you my way to do it just because I don't want people to do it that way. I don't fully trust it yet, 
I do have an idea um, I want to take into the future with me. I'm not going to talk about that just yet because I don't know if it'll work. I don't want to get you excited for something and then just be like, oh, never mind. Sorry. But basically, this wall has to come back um, to clearance for the transfer case. Now, let me put this back over here out of the way. You can see the block. So let's say you've made it this far. You've got your caliber block, you've got your modified frame, you've got the clutch, flywheel, you've got the transmission, transfer case, all of it's installed, custom oil pan. Great job. Now you can take all of that and shove it into your caliber. Screw it. Um, when you go to put this in, uh, the transmission shaped just a little bit differently than the uh, front wheel drive transmission. It's gonna hit on the frame. I just cut out a chunk of my frame. I think I might have a picture or a video of that. I'll stick in here too, but um, you have to clearance the frame. You have to cut out a little bit. I don't mind. My car is pretty much set up for cutting it apart, right? I've cut a whole lot out of my car. Um, so it didn't hurt my feelings. And I've got to tear it all back apart once the garage is done. Uh, so I can go in there and kind of reinforce it a little more later. You do have to notch the frame to get the transmission up into place. Um, after you do that... You can go back in and get some thick steel, reinforce that, weld some pieces in there, and get it back sturdy. Um, then let's talk engine mounts. You have one engine mount on the passenger side of the engine. And for the Caliber and Evo, they both have three transmission mounts. Um, I tried it with the Caliber mounts. I didn't like the way it sat. It was kind of an odd position, so I used the Evo X body and engine transmission mounts themselves. I got all the pieces and used those. Um, the, the engine mount went on pretty much no problem. You do have to kind of move where a bolt hole goes on the body. Um, you don't have to move it on the body, just the bracket that bolts to the body. Not a huge deal. I think I've got some videos I can throw in here for you too. Um, the three mounts on the transmission. Uh, the front one, it's a little odd. You got to work with it. Um, but it's the same. It's slotting holes. It's just getting it to mount in that same position. You have one on top of the transmission that bolts to the frame uh, frame rail. Um, I don't think there were any issues at all with that one. It pretty much went on pretty straightforward, uh, straight bolt on there. And then the rear mount that's in the very back. Um, I got the bracket on the transmission. Then I go to bolt it to the uh, Evo X uh, mount, which is sitting on the caliber uh, K-frame, cross member there. Um, one of the one of the mounting points is the same. There's three mounting points. One of them is the same. The other two, uh, I believe you can put a nut cert in a hole, and you can use that one because there is a hole there. I'm assuming it's for um, the all-wheel drive caliber or maybe the K-frames between the two cars were so similar. Um, maybe you can use that. But what I did is put a nut cert in one hole and then got it to mount in the other point too. Small amount of work. Um, nothing too crazy there. You can get the Evo mounts to work. Now, when you do get it mounted in there, what it's going to do with your engine, those Evo mounts actually pick the engine up a little bit and they shift it toward the passenger side just slightly, which I find to be better anyways because I'm shooting that, uh, that drive shaft down the center of the car, so it actually helped out with positioning there. Um, the only other issue I saw once I moved it uh, into the Evo position, the alternator for the Caliber SRT4 has a huge decoupler on the alternator. Um, the pulley is really thick because it's got this clutch and spring system on the end of it. I don't believe the Evo has that. I think it's just a standard pulley. What I did is removed my alternator so I could get it in there, bolted in. I took my alternator, uh, took the pulley off of it, disassembled the clutches, springs, everything, and then just welded it solid, made a solid pulley on the end of that alternator. It is a testing alternator. It does still charge the car. It works perfectly fine but I'd like to make something different in the future once I tear it all apart again. But it works for now, it works for testing. So that's how to get all of this in the front of the car. You do have a couple of small things left, shift cables, uh, the Evo cables, of course they go on the transmission. Um, they actually do fit the caliber shifter, no problem. I had an Evo shifter that I could try to mount up inside, but they fit my shifter. Um, the only thing I noticed was the cables were a little shorter than caliber cables, so I used the caliber cables, um, so I had the length. That way they would go on my shifter, and I just swapped the ends for the transmission side so I could get them on the transmission. Um, I had a little uh, adjusting to do with the cables, but I can go through all the gears now, no problem, with the caliber shifter. 
in the car. So that worked out pretty well. Uh, then you have the, um, I'll call it the axles, right? So you get the Evo axles, both front axles. Um, so I got both Evo X front axles, stuck them in there. Um, I got Evo X uh, steering knuckles. They mounted to the uh, the caliber lower control arm and the, uh, uh, the coilover, the caliber coilover, as well as the tie rod in, the, the steering tie rod in there. Um, so the Evo knuckles just straight swap, plus they have your Evo, uh, your hub, your hub assembly to where the axles can come through there. Um, there is a difference in the splines from the caliber axles to the Evo axles, so to fix that I just grab the whole knuckle, hub, assembly, all of it. Um, slide in, no problem. I made custom brackets for my brake calipers to go on. I don't see why you couldn't just get the front brakes off of an Evo X and use those. I'm going to use a, a set of custom brakes that I'm kind of making with a company right now. Um, so that's going to be going on my car. Other than that, it's just a set of brake brackets. And then you throw your brakes on, run your line, stick your tires on, front of the car, done. Um, I guess we can jump to the back of the car now. You have the Caliber SRT4 gas tank. It's got to go. Your drive shaft has to go right through the middle of it. So you have to drop your gas tank. You could probably use the all-wheel drive Caliber gas tank. Um, I really don't see why you couldn't because it would have a provision. It would have an, a space for uh, a drive shaft to go through. I'm going with a fuel cell in the back of the car. I don't know if you could use an Evo tank. Maybe you could kind of get it to work in there, but you're going to have to get around the factory caliber tank. However, you want to try that. Um, then moving on to the back. So for my car, I did something a little bit different as always. Um, I did kind of a custom subframe uh, and suspension setup back there, um, a different differential than a lot of guys would go for. Now the Evo X differential has the active yaw control, I believe, so it's got a pump running lines to that. It also has a line to the transfer case. You can delete that and your transfer case is just going to be an open center diff, um, or you can try to get some type of aftermarket pump to put on it so you can have a switch that you know you can lock and unlock your differential, whatever you want to do with that setup. Um, there's no electronics that you'll have to go through unless you want to. Um, you could just fill that full of fluid and cap it if you wanted to, and you'll have all-wheel drive. It'll just be a non-locking center differential. Um, now, in the back, like I was talking about, the active yaw control, a lot of your Evo X guys are going to delete that anyways just because it's less to worry about, less failures to happen. Plus, you can use an Evo 8, 9, or Evo Rally Art rear diff. It's just a mechanical differential. Um, you can get LSDs aftermarket for it if you wanted to. A lot of guys are going to use those. So I will say the Caliber SRT4 rear subframe does not really have a provision for the differential. You can get one off of a Jeep Compass Patriot uh, Caliber RT all-wheel drive. All the part numbers are the same. That's going to bolt under your car. Plus it's got a little uh, added brace in there and some bolt points for a differential to go. So you could get an Evo 8.9 Rally Art Differential. You could probably use the factory mounts. It's probably close enough to the to the Evo stuff. Um, you could probably bolt that in or just get some mounts fabbed up, slot some holes, do what you got to do to mount that differential back there. Um, and that's how you would get the diff mounted in the back. I'm sure you could use Rally Art axles or something along those lines in the back of the car. Um, and then just get your your hubs and anything you need to, to mount that. Same with the front, you know, you do the, the hubs where the axles can come through the back um, and then your brakes and it's done, it's mounted, your rear end is in. Um, as far as drive shaft, I'm doing a custom setup. Um, just for testing purposes, I got an all wheel drive caliber drive shaft. I also have an Evo X drive shaft just to see what fits where the points are. Um, the caliber SRT4 has uh, bolt holes or I think it's called a carrier bearing in the middle of the drive shaft. Um, surprisingly, the Caliber RT, the base model all-wheel drive caliber, um, of course the bolt points mount up, but also the front of that drive shaft slides right into the Evo X transfer case. Um, but I used that as a mock-up to kind of see how much longer I needed my drive shaft to be to go to my rear diff that's in my car. Um, and I got a custom drive shaft made, but you can base off of an all-wheel drive caliber drive shaft. You can base your design off of that because you can actually slide it in, bolt it into the carrier bearing, and then see how you would need to mount it. 
it might just bolt up. I haven't personally tried it, but it might just bolt up because everything's really close. Um, and if not, it's not too, it's not going to be too far off. So guys, that's the that's the bare minimum you're going to need. <laughs> um, a little bit of fab work, a little bit of custom stuff here and there, um, and a lot of parts, right? So a lot of people want to know what's the price. There's not a set price. I can't just tell you like, oh, $3,642.16. I can't say that because your transmission is going to cost more or less than mine. Your, your transfer case, you're going to find different prices. I don't even know if you can find this stuff new anymore. I pieced old stuff together just for fitment purposes with the intention of tearing the entire car back apart after it's done. So now that it's done and functioning, my garage is getting built. I'll pull it in there tear everything apart and send it all out to get built. Um, there's a lot of plans. The whole reason why I went all wheel drive for the car, I'm talking to Aaron with Realtune. I told him years ago, I was going to run tens front wheel drive. You can go faster than tens front wheel drive, but I wanted to go faster than that. I wanted to go really fast in this car. Just basically take the caliber as far as it would go. It's a project. It's paid off. It sits there. If it blows up, it blows up. I don't care. I don't need it. It's a toy, right? So I wanted to go all wheel drive just to see how it would work. And this was years ago. So finally, 20, uh, 2021, that was finished. So 2022, I'm gonna get the garage built, um, put the car in there, rip it all apart, send it all out, and then bring it back and video as it all goes back together. The reason I didn't video a whole lot of it going together in the first place is it was a lot of boring stuff, right? The one day I got everything right, there's five days in front of that that everything did not work. It was a lot of testing, and I didn't want to just record that and, and post all that. We just, we just want to see results, right? That's what the internet is. They, they like results. The result is the all-wheel drive car works. Um, super possible. It's a lot of work. Um, a lot of people would say if you wanted an Evo X drivetrain, just buy an Evo X. I'm not going to say that's wrong. I'm not going to say it's right. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. I wanted a Dodge Caliber that was all-wheel drive. Um, with 700 horsepower. So this is going to be it. So I think that's going to be it for this video. Um, you could add questions in the comments if you wanted to. Please don't message me on Saturday night at 2 a.m. when you're drunk and you're like, I'm going to make my car all-wheel drive. Don't do that. Um, comment under the video. Um, me, anybody else that's working on an all-wheel drive setup, maybe we could answer your questions there. Let's let's keep the questions here for now. And, uh, and moving forward, it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll do a lot more videoing because I know how it goes together now. And, and you can kind of watch it go into that into that all-wheel drive beast mode. So um, here we go to the future, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.